you in a way you kind of cut your teeth partially in the studio, right? Because you were the record plant had a big played a big role early on with you. Yeah, as, yeah. I mean, I was like 16, 15 and a half, 16 when we hooked up with the record plant. Yeah. <clears throat> and before that, I practiced like a lot, you know, I'd come home from school. I would do uh, go down in the basement in Brooklyn, New York, practice, play with some records. Uh, and then after dinner, I would go on the pad and do my lessons. So I was going for lessons on the pad only. So I took it very seriously, and then I played with a few bands, and then uh, hooked up with the band I was in with the record plant, and that's where I learned how to record a little more, because when I went in, they played a little bit. They said, well, you're kind of Russian, and I never thought of that, because Mm -hmm. live, it's Russian naturally on some of it, and uh, they put up a metronome light. Now, wow, it's hard to play to a light. (laughs) It's easy to play to a click. (laughs) So I watched the light and I played and, and then I learned. I learned how to to, to uh, live in the in the studio. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it was a great learning experience. And the engineer was Jimmy Iveen. Mm-hmm. You know, um, um, he was a good friend. Uh, he got me started, basically. Brought me in there. Right. We met John Lennon. We did some stuff with John Lennon. And yeah. that's where I met Rick Derringer, my first touring band and stuff. So, yeah, it was cool. Great time. Yeah, it was it was only just recently that I learned because I'd seen that footage from the Lou Grade, the tribute to Lou Grade show that you did with John. I'd seen it so many times that it, and it was just re- like it was last year. I forgot that's Vinny. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> the Vinny. crazy suit with the two faces and stuff. It's so well, cool. John. The the show was about Sir Lou Grade, and John thought he was two faced. Right. So he right. told us he wants us to go on with a mask made of our face, and we'll mm-hmm. put it on the back, no hair, and. Uh, we wear black shiny jumpsuits. He wears a red one. So we actually got in the van with him to go get the mask made. He came with us. I mean, yeah. it was like hanging out. We got the mask yeah. made. Then we all went together again to get the jumpsuits fitted. And uh, and it was a black tie affair at the New York Hilton. Like the mayor was there, Shirley MacLaine, all these actors and actresses. And then they introduced John Lennon and et cetera. They called us et cetera. And we come out, the curtain opens, and they're all like, oh, my God. <laughs> the hell is that? Nine guys with full home players, two faces on, no hair. And John, you know, yeah, it was great. John shocked him again. And That's then so I cool. found out not long, not long ago that that was his last live appearance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I read that in a magazine. It mentioned John. It mentioned me. And it said this was John's last live public appearance. And I went, holy shit, really? I was 16 years old. I used to go to high school. I said, I wind up playing John Lennon's last show. (laughs) Who would have thought? I didn't even know that for years. Yeah. That was even more of a like, wow. Right, right. That was so more is, is like, it, wow, I did that. I should get more money per gig. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so is it true? I, I heard this great story that you you walked out of class the next day after that show. Well, what happened was, you know, I would be hanging out with, with John Lennon because he used to come up. We had a rehearsal room at the record plant because we yeah. managed them. So we were there all the time. Jimmy was producing us and we go in the studio and cut some songs. And then uh, after what happened, uh, Jimmy called us, said, we need some hand claps in the studio. Can you guys come down? We went down. We walk in the room. And it's John Lennon. I go, holy shit. We put the headphones on. <laughs> then he starts talking to us. Now he's right in your ears, talking to you, right? And, and you've heard his voice so many times. And I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. So we did <laughs> hand claps to whatever gets you through the night. That's me and my band on on that song. And nice. uh, and then we finished and we said hello. I don't think anybody took pictures or had a camera <clears throat> or uh, any of that. And then uh, we left and we went back upstairs and we're all freaking out. And John must have wondered, where did we come from? Nine guys all of a sudden for hand claps in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> then they must have, Jimmy probably told me, he was up, they were upstairs, the rehearsal room I'm producing. A couple of days later, John walks into rehearsal, sits down on the step, watching <laughs> us play. He really liked us. 
They used yeah. to come all the time. It's kind of like smoke joints with them, and cool. it was amazing, you know. So yeah. from what I heard, he was thinking of maybe using us as his next band because we were really good, and we had four horns. We had the whole thing ready pretty much if he wanted to, to use us. You know, yeah. We were writing originals, and we were we were tight. So, uh, yeah. um, so I used to do that at night. Then going to school the next day, it was like going from color world into black and white. Right. I'd be sitting there going, I don't want to learn. I don't want to learn this shit, you know? And I'd be banging on the desk, <laughs> drumming on the desk. And then the teacher would go, who's that drumming? She's trying to teach and I'm annoying her. Who's that drumming? She goes, Vincent, stop that drumming. And I would stand up and go, excuse me, anyone else in this room play with one of the Beatles last night? <laughs> And I got up and walked out. <laughs> right? I love that. I love it. You so concentrate cool. on it school is. and you're thinking, wow, last night was amazing. And John yeah. did this. He even rewrote some lyrics for us. And uh, Wow. Now, now a guitar player sang on World, Wall, Walls and Bridges album, some mm-hmm. background parts. So oh, cool. uh, it was really cool. It was a yeah. great, great experience. You know? It's such a trip because I, I love that record too. And I, I didn't even know – this is how I how much I didn't read the liner notes. I didn't even know that Jimmy Iovine was on that session, that he was part of that. Yeah. You know, John is credited as the producer. Obviously, Jimmy was engineering it. But yeah. Um, yeah, I Jimmy think it was – Did all, all those people. And, and then our guitar player knew him. And then uh, I don't know how he heard us. I, for, I forgot, but he really liked us. And yeah. so I'll bring you in the record plan, do some demos. And the demos came out great. That yeah. was really cool. So, and, th- and in that studio, that's where I met Rick Derringer, which was my first touring band. Um, Jimmy, I think Rick was recording there, and Jimmy was playing, doing something to our, our mixes. I wasn't even there, and Rick heard it and said, who's that drummer? And Jimmy said, that's Finney Appleseed, Carmine's younger brother. I said, wow, that sounds good, man. So next time I saw him, he got my number. I said, I'm going to put a band together. Give me a number. I'll, I'll call you. I'd love to jam, you know, put something together. So six months later, he called, and we got that band going. Uh, being cool. in the right place at the right time. Yeah. It, Jack Douglas produced Rick Derringer when you were with him too, right? On the second album. On the Rick second one. Okay. the first one, yeah. If you listen to okay. the two albums, the first one's kind of lighter sounding. Drums mm-hmm. are the nerd. There's not a lot of reverb. It wasn't the big drum sound. The second album, uh, what was it called? Sweet Evil. Um, Jack produced, and it was really dark. Big, fat sound and stuff. You know, yeah. It was yeah. cool. Jack was great yeah. to work with. Yeah. Well, that was cool, too, because he, he hadn't produced John yet, but he was fixing to in a couple of years. Yeah, <laughs> Dad, he was doing that. Aerosmith. And yeah. So it was yeah. a great place to be hanging out. You know, No kidding. Why go wow. to school? So the other John connection I thought was really interesting is that when, after you joined Sabbath, I, I heard that you, the first, the first actual session you did with Sabbath was at John Lennon's old recording studio in his house. Yeah. We yeah. were on tour in England and they wanted us to do, this is the heaven and hell tour, 1980. They mm-hmm. wanted us to do a song for the movie heavy metal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> they agreed to do it. We had two days off, two or three days off in England. So we went, to John Lennon's house, which was owned by Ringo now because John passed. And that's where John shot Imagine. So it's like, holy shit, go to this mansion, big ground, a lot of grounds. All the hedges were cut like animals, like T-Rexes, 20 feet high hedges. It was just a killer place, you know, big wow. wooden staircase you know, going upstairs. That's where the drums were right there. And the drums were. Oh Flo- you know, the sound was going all the way up to all all the stairs and the wood and everything. And wow. uh, <clears throat> that's where we <clears throat> re- wrote and recorded Mob Rules you know, in two, wow. three days. And then when they gave out keys, when we arrived, I got John's room, which is freaky. Right. I'm, I'm the only one with a tie to John. I got his room. But I didn't <laughs> stay there because he just passed. And I'm like. I've seen so, too many Frankenstein movies when I grew right, up. Right, right, right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's like, his ghost of John is going to come visit me. Although his ghost would be cool. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. No question. That would have been cool. But I didn't stay in that no. room. But 
everywhere we looked around, we had opened a closet door, all those Beatles, platinum albums and Beatles stuff fall out. <laughs> Holy shit, you know. Even Tony <laughs> and Keezer and Ronnie are like freaking out, you know. <laughs> it's an amazing place. <laughs>